As we begin the year, this being our first Sunday service uh, in the year 2023, uh, I just want to bring our hearts close to uh, uh, to the topic of uh, you know to the topic in relation to uh, the presence of God. Uh, our SP has introduced us to our theme for the year. Uh, what was our theme last year? The God's glory. Yes, radiating is glory. His glory. And this year, we are coming into His presence. Uh, perhaps we did not radiate His glory as we should have, uh, because we were a little bit far. <laughs> we were away from His presence. And uh, so maybe we radiated other glories. Uh, but this year, by the grace of God, God is leading us uh, into His presence. And... Um, it, it's, 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 it's actually what we need. It's what we need, the presence of God. Uh, programs and structures and every other thing without God will all just amount to nothing. You know, our skill, you know, our aptitudes, if it does not have the touch of God, if it does not have the presence of God, it cannot achieve anything. It may seem to be progressive, it may seem to be achieving anything, but I just want to tell you the truth. Anything without God, anything without God, will always never last. And so this year we want to really be in the presence of God and, uh, and trust Him. So my topic today is the quest for His presence, the quest for His presence. And I just want to do uh, a definition of some terms here uh, using the uh, for capture. For capture is a, uh, is a dictionary which I like using in studying and getting the, the root word of some terms. Uh, you know, I realized, I, 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 the other day I went, uh, I was looking for a, a, a divination from uh, a dictionary, and it was so strange how they defined that word. You know, they just defined it like the layman, like us. You know, actually I just realized that was a wrong definition. And, um, because a good definition should actually give you the etymology of, this, of the term. How the term came into being. Is that okay? Yeah, not, not what we think the term uh, means, but it should give us uh, the, the, the etymology, how, how the term came into being. So it should give us from the origin of that particular term. And I always like using this, the book capture uh, dictionary. Uh, I want us to look at the word, the quest, uh, the word quest, and what does it mean? Uh, from that uh, dictionary, uh, the first definition of the word quest is a journey or effort in pursuit of a goal and often lengthy, ambitious, or fervent, or it is a mission. The word quest means uh, an effort in pursuit of a goal. You know, when you are pursuing something, you would say, this is my quest. You know, and it's not only a short pers uh, pursuit, it is a lengthy pursuit. And not only a, a lengthy pursuit, that means, uh, you know, you, you are so consistent, you put your effort towards what you want to achieve. Uh, it's not only that, uh, it also says that quest has uh, an element of ambition in it. You know, you are so ambitious, you want to get it, and you are so excited, and you are going to what you want with energy or with uh, ambition. And also another uh, uh, aspect that we find in the term quest is that it is fervent, you know, fervent. Fervency is actually uh, comes from, it's related with ambition, it's related with energy. 
Okay? So, uh, so when we are talking of our quest for God, actually we are saying we are pursuing God with fervency. We are pursuing God, you know, not for a short while, but we are pursuing God for the rest of our lives. It involves a length of time. It involves an element of time. The other definition of the same word quest is actually uh, obvious. It is the act of seeking or looking after anything. Uh, it's the attempt or to find or to obtain. So you say that's my quest, okay? Yeah, when you want to do something, uh, you have a project, you want to build a house, you want to rise in your career, then you say, I have a quest, that's my quest. And uh, as we're beginning and you're here again, I know many of us are writing down uh, our goals, our ambitions, you know, targets, and no, now all those we can call uh, our quest for the year. So, other than the things that you have put in your diary, other than the things that you put in your, you know, in your goals for the year, we want you to put part of that to be your quest for His presence. Can we say amen? With all your ambition to get things, please put also in that the quest for His presence. The quest for His presence. Now, what is the genesis of our quest for God? What's the genesis for our quest for God? Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verses 2 and 3. And we read, the Bible says, Listen to me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. Now, this, this is what we normally, uh, it's part of our covenant when we are being ordained as pastors, as reverends in Sita. These particular words are form part of our covenant which we make during our ordination. And uh, these words were actually given to Asa and Judah and, and the household of Benjamin uh, by uh, by the prophet, by a prophet who had been sent by the Lord. And the basis of this scripture is that the Lord is with you when you are with him. You know there is a fallacy we have. There is a fallacy which comes out of complacency. think and many people think that God is obligated to be with us always. <laughs> you know, I, I, the last time I was here, I, 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 well, I said we have a problem uh, with Christians and, and not, not even Christians, humanity. We behave like spoiled children. You know, we come to God as poor children. We do not respect God. We do not honor God. We do not obey God. We want God to obey us. We want God to do our things. Hey, who is the boss? Especially with you Pentecostals. Huh? We come here and I say, I command. Hey, you know, I command the spirit to move. Who, who are you commanding? Anything he does is out of favor. 
And if you want to leave it, go away from today. You remember Jesus said sometimes he preached a very hard message. And people now say, this is very hard. And Jesus said, okay, you want to go? Go. Let us not come to God and we think we can manipulate God. Is it not our Lord who said, not my will, but your will be done? Oh, yeah. Is it not the Lord himself? But at times we behave and we want God to do the things. We have taken God as our errand boy. We send God. We command God. Hey, this has to change. You know what God says in Malachi? You know, chapter 1, verse 6. He says, a son honors his father. And a master obeys, and a servant obeys his master. And he tells the Jews who had been entitled and they had behaved like us. And he tells them, if I am God, if I am your father, where is my honor? If I am your master, where is my fear? God is not our errand boy. He's not, he's not. He can choose not to answer you and still be God. And you say, Amen. Yeah. Have you not heard of what Daniel said? He told this wicked king, the Lord will save us. But in case he does not, he chooses not to save, we will still not bow to your God. We know him is the Almighty God. So the Lord tells us here, and Israel and Benjamin, the Lord is with you as long as you are with him. Oh, yes. If you choose not to be with him, he will quit and not regret. Are we together? So this is the God of the Bible. He says, the Lord is with you when you are with him. You decide whether God is going to be with you or not. You make a decision. In 2023, you will choose whether the Lord will be with you or not. And that, those are some of the things you're going to, to look at. If you seek him, he will be found by you. If that is a conditional term, you have the discretion not to seek him. But if you seek him, the Bible says he will be found by you. Are we together? Are we together, church? So, what does that mean? Our knowledge of God is equivalent to our fervency in seeking Him. You find God only to the level of your seeking. If you don't seek Him, in fact, God will be so vague. God will be so far removed until you even say there is no God. If you seek him, he'll be found by you. But if you forsake him, listen to this now. If you forsake him, he will forsake you. You see? So let's come out of the fallacy. God is 
not deficient. God is not under pressure. You remember the children of Israel at one time, you know, they could not behave well before God. And God was so angry. And to an extent, he tells Moses, please Moses, get out of these people. Let me clear them. And I start another generation with you. God is not deficient. God is not boxed. God is not in a corner. It is not for his good for us to seek him. It is for our good. And he says, if you seek him, we will find him. If we forsake him, he will surely forsake us. And that is the state of humanity. We live in a generation where we are forsaken God. God is not a priority. God is not part of the things that excite us. It's no wonder that we can be in a service like this and someone does not get any excitement in God and goes to the social media to be excited. It is no wonder. It is no wonder that the things that excite us in the least, God is none of that. And do you know what? He will not force himself to us. When we forsake him, what will he do? He will reciprocate. He'll forsake us. And that is the state of humanity. God is so far removed. God is nowhere in our lives. In Psalms, David says, we do not see the signs and wonders which our forefathers told us. Why? Because God is no longer seen at work in the day and in the life. It is no wonder, friends, that God may not be at work in our lives because we forsook him. But in 2023, we're making a decision. We are coming back into his presence. Amen. And we celebrate the Lord for that. We are coming back into his presence. God will matter in our lives. The Bible says, David said, I hate those who hate you. And for sure, I don't have even an iota of respect of anybody who dishonor God. You cannot dishonor my father and you are still my best day. How? Hi guys, this cannot happen. We have guys and people in our workplaces who dishonor God and we still are their friends. Hey! That will end that very day. Even if it's your brother and your mother. God has to receive the honor he deserves. Amen. In 2023, we are we have a quest to seek him, to seek his presence. Brethren, that is why indeed truly. What excites me is to find a person who loves God. Hey! That really excites me. Man. To find someone who is consistent in his or her faith, hey, that excites me. Hmm. There are some jokes you will hear these days. Huh? And you are just laughing and somebody is making fun of your God. Hey. To say machine, man. Yeah. You cannot make fun of my father. I will box you and remove all your teeth. Okay? Hebrews 11, 6 says, Anyone who comes to him must believe that he, that he exists and that he is a rewarder and that he rewards those who honestly seek him. 
You see, God is a rewarder, not of everybody. He rewards. Can you see the adverb there? What is the adverb there? Hey, what is the adverb? Which, which one is the adverb there? Honestly, yes, of course. Yeah. Those who honestly seek Him. You know, yes, I appreciate you've been seeking God, but it has to be honestly. Are we together? You say God did not reward me. He does not only reward those who seek Him, He rewards those who honestly seek Him. How much time do you spend seeking God? How much time do you spend, you know, reading the Word, praying, meditating on the Word of God? How much time? He rewards those who honestly seek Him. So it has to be an honest seeking. So in 2023, as we uh, seek to be in His presence, friends, the key to our seeking and to be in His presence is honestness. We have to be honest in our seeking. We have to have a lengthy and a fervent seeking of the Lord. Amen. Brethren, you need to make decisions today. Can we say amen? amen? You have to make decisions today. You say every morning before I speak to people, I will speak to God. And you say every night before I sleep, and the last person I speak to is, is the Lord. Brethren, we can make decisions. And you say during that time, you go into your car, you know, you, you raise the windows and you take some time to pray and to meditate the word of God. Are we together? It has to be an honest seeking. So why does the Lord say we have to seek him honestly? Why does the Lord say we have to seek him honestly? I just want to give us an understanding of the Bible so that we may build and know the place of our quest in seeking God and know the place of our quest in seeking the presence of God. Now I want to just give us the Bible in, in, in summary, okay, I think I've done this before, but let me just still repeat, just in case you did not hear. Okay, what's the Bible in the nutshell? What do you think the Bible is all about? Have you imagined, what is, what is the theme of the Bible? Okay, uh, I know you can come up with your own conclusions different from what I'm saying or what I came up with, but it's still okay as long as it's based on the, on the scriptures. But I have some three observations whenever I look at the Bible, okay? The first thing, an observation uh, about the Bible is that one, the Bible is the story of God. The Bible is the story of God as the creator of the universe. Genesis 1 verses 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is the introduction of the Bible. Genesis 1 verses 1, In the beginning, what? God. So the Bible and you know how God brought, uh, you know, designed and allowed us to have the Bible in the way it is. The first thing is that we should know that the Bible is about God and not only about God, we have God as the source of 
all these things that we see. He is the creator. So Genesis 1 verses 1, God created the heavens and the what? And the earth. That is so interesting, you know. That is the introduction. And when the Bible talks of the heavens, actually it's not talking about these heavens. It's talking about the entire universe. You know, the earth is where we are, but the heavens actually represents the universe. And there is a question I was asking some teens the other day, and I told them, where is heaven? Where is heaven, you guys? Where is heaven? Heaven is up. <laughs> Okay, please go on exploration and, and know where heaven is. Are you going to heaven? Are you going to heaven? Yes. How many in the world are going to heaven? Where is heaven? Yes, I need a Jew. Yes, I need a Jew. I need a Jew. He went to the clouds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know now as Uma is thinking hard and is searching the scriptures. So God is uh, the heavens, we are talking of the universe. You know, when we look up into the sky at night, we see the stars. You know, the stars are not the little things as you say, little, little. Twinkle, twinkle. You know that song? Those are not little twinkle, twinkle men. These are big and huge bodies. Masses of creation that God created. So, so the Bible introduces that God created the universe. And then it stops. It does not tell us anything about Jupiter. It does not tell us anything about Mars. It does not tell us anything about Pluto. It does not tell us anything about, you know, the nebulae that are up there. It does not tell us anything. Instead, it says, verses 2, and the earth was void. So the second story or the second theme of the Bible is the earth. The Bible tells us about the earth as the habitat of man, as the human habitat. God does not tell us anything. He just says he created the heavens and the earth. And then verses 2, he does not talk about the heavens. He now says, and the earth. Now God narrows him to his purpose in giving us the Bible. He's giving us the story of the earth. And when we read Genesis 1 verses 2 and verses 3, the Bible says, and the, and the earth, and verse 3 says, and God said, let there be light. And then God said again, and God said again, and God said again. Do you know what God was doing in those saying and saying and creating things in the earth? He was actually doing, uh, he was actually creating the earth's ecosystem. Do you know about the continental what? The tectonic plates, you know that? Uh, and this People who study ge geography tell us that the earth drifted. Remember that? That the earth was a single mass and then there was a drift. And that's why they even tell us, you know, when you look at Africa, you can take Africa and fit it to South, South America. You see how you know, that thing can just fit together? And, and it's true. It is a true observation. 
And do you know when that thing happened? In Genesis chapter 1 and verses, was it 3 or 4, when he created the earth, when he said, let the waters separate. That is the day that thing happened. That is the day we go to Africa for your information. <laughs> That is the day we go to America. That is the very hour in St. Genesis. That is when we go to this day. So let nobody cheat you. Eh? He created it. And so, the story of the Bible is about the earth as the habitat of humankind. Alright? Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Yeah, there is a planet called Europa. You know Europa? Europa is one of the moons, and uh, Europa is, is close to Genesis 1. Very close. Because Europa is covered by ice. And that is one of the things I always ask myself. What kind of water that was there on earth? Because there was no light, there was no heat, and always when there's no, when the earth, when the water is put under a cold place, what do you have? Ice. And exactly that is how Europa is. Europa is just covered by water, but that water is ice. So, uh, the Bible is not telling us things which are beyond, uh, which we can go to Europe and just see how art was before creation. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the third thing we need to understand about the Bible is that uh, the Bible is the story about human beings. You know? The Bible is about human beings. Because we see Genesis 1, it introduces all these things. And then finally, after all these things, God had done, created the ecosystem, he, he creates man. And he said, let me create man in our own likeness so that they may dominate. So not only does the Bible tell us about human beings, the Bible tells us about human beings as the dominant, as the dominant species of land. Okay? So that is how we dominate. Now, and then the other thing we see in the Bible is that uh, the Bible tells us about God's presence on earth. Not only does he tell us about the earth, but it tells us about the presence of God. Genesis 1 verses 2, now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So we find God on the earth. He creates the universe, the heavens and the earth, and the Bible tells us the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the earth. So God was in the earth before he created man. God was in the earth before he created man. So there was the presence of God in the earth. Now, the other thing we find in the Bible is that there was a communion. There was a fellowship between God and Adam. Genesis 3 verses 8 to 9, the Bible says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden, but the Lord God called to them, where are you? Now, this gives us very, very important uh, aspects. One is that Adam and Eve dwelt in the presence of God. When he created the first human beings, these human beings dwelt and lived in the presence of God. They were with God. The second thing is that they interacted with God freely in the garden. Now when we are talking about the presence of God today which is very much removed, that was not normal. Our normalcy was to be with God, talk 
with God and freely interact with him. So God was not removed. But something happened. That's the story of the Bible again. The broken communion was the, the communion was broken. The fellowship, the very thing that was happening in the Garden of Eden was destroyed. That is Genesis chapter 3, verses 22 and 24. The Bible says, So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. Now this is after sin. Some things happen immediately after sin. And one of the things that happened immediately after the sin of man was his removal from the Garden of Eden. He was banished. He was sent away. And that is where actually we have the beginning of our quest inside for his presence. We were sent away. So not only communion was broken, but they were banished from the presence of God. And from that day to this day, we have been running away and staying away from the presence of God. When we read Genesis 6, it's a few verses after Genesis 1, we see the continued depravity of the human soul. And the Bible says, human beings continue to become wicked until God said, you know, my spirit will not contend any longer with man for his motto. And that day is the day when God reduced our lifespan beyond earth from the many years that we would have lived. Actually, the eternal lives we would have lived on earth and he reduced it to 120. Okay, I just want to conclude with this. There is a restoration that happened. There is a restoration that happened. And that restoration of the presence of God was done through Jesus Christ. Okay? Matthew 1, verses 23, the Bible says, The virgin will be with child and will give birth to son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So Jesus comes as Emmanuel. He comes as God's presence with us again. We were banished from the presence of God. We were sent away from the garden. But Jesus comes and he comes as Emmanuel. God with us. The presence again is restored. We have become Ichabod. But now through Jesus, the presence of God comes back again to us. Can we say amen? amen. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in there. It is. So, the restoration of God's presence is primarily and totally through Jesus Christ. There is no way we can access the presence of God without Jesus. The second way the presence of God has been restored back to us is in John 14, which actually will be forming part of our exposition scriptures. John 14 and verse 16. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. So the Holy Spirit again comes back to us. We saw in Genesis 1 verses 1. The Spirit of God was hovering where? On the face of the earth. But because of sin, the Holy Spirit was lifted. It went away out of the earth. Genesis 6, God says, My Spirit will not continue be grieved by the sins of mankind. And that is the day the Holy Spirit left the earth. And from that day until John 14, Jesus says, I will ask the Father, and he will send the Holy Spirit back to the earth. Can we say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will come back again. He will be restored.
restored back again and the presence of God will come back on the earth again. One of the unique things and signs of our day, brethren, is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Joel said, in the last days, the Lord shall pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That is the mark of our day. That is the uniqueness of our time, brethren. Whereby the Holy Spirit is on maidens. The Holy Spirit is on young people. The Holy Spirit is on all the people as well. That that way, God is restoring his presence. I said the first one is through. Jesus, the second one through. The Holy Spirit, the third way, is by Christ going up to prepare an actual place of our, of, of our eternal abode with him. John 14 again, verse 3, when you read again, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. In Genesis 1, 3, Jesus creates the entire universe and he creates the earth for our abode. But he says again now here, I'm going away. I'm going to do another thing just as I did in Genesis chapter 1. And you know what? When we shall be in heaven, we shall have another Genesis 1. Where we shall hear again. And in the first day, Jesus began doing this. Jesus began doing this. I don't know if he did, he's doing this for how many years or how many days. But Jesus has gone to prepare a place. Another abode. You remember we had an abode? But Jesus is going to restore another place for us. The last thing is that how is God restoring his presence with us again is by restoring his eternal dwelling with us. Genesis, not Genesis, Revelations chapter 21 and verses 2 and 4. The Bible says here, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a pride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men. Now the dwelling of God is with men. Now the dwelling of God is with men. He will live with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. The very thing we lost in Genesis 1 is the story of the last chapter of the Bible. The restoration of the dwelling place of God where a man and God is together again as it were in Genesis 1. And how is that possible? Jesus came to restore the presence of God back to us. In conclusion, John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, and when Jesus says no one, it means no one. There is no way anybody can be saved. I'm telling you the truth. There is no way we can be saved. Salvation is not possible in any other way. God's presence is only restored on our lives through Jesus Christ. You cannot have God's presence in your life unless Emmanuel is in you. There is no way. I'm telling you, there is no way completely. It's impossible. Jesus says, I'm the only way to the Father. Only way. Nothing can save you except Jesus. The other day, some people came to my office and I asked them this question. How many sins did Adam commit for him to be sent away from the presence of God? How many sins? Just one. How many sins have we committed and we want to be in the presence of God? You know, that is a fallacy. 
see, we think we can just appear and, and we think we talk God and say, Hi God, yeah, it's John, yeah, don't you know John? It's me, it's me, I'll come. <laughs> hmm. Those are some of the fallacies I told you. You cannot, it's impossible. There's no way we can enter into his presence without Jesus. You remember the story of Moses? When he wanted to see the face of God, God told Moses, guy, you are asking a dangerous thing. You cannot see me and bleed. You'll die. And till God had to do a favor. God hides him under a stone, a rock. And he puts his hand on his face so that he passes and that uh, Moses would just see for God from, the, from behind. God is high voltage power. I'm telling you, it's more than billions of nuclear explosions. How will you survive that? It's only through Jesus. The Bible says we are in Christ, we are hidden in Christ in God. It's only God, it's only Christ who insulates us. Let's, without Christ, I'm telling you, God will destroy us. You appear before God and you say you don't have Christ. How will you even appear? You will make it. You will evaporate. So Jesus is the only way to the Father. He is the only hope for the human soul. Brethren, Jesus is the only hope for the human soul. Nothing can satisfy except his presence. And who brings the presence of God? Jesus. And Jesus is the hope of glory, the Bible tells us. He is the only hope for the human soul. He don't need, is it called he, he, he don't need it. The love of pleasure, what is that called? He don't need it. He don't need it. He don't need it. Friends cannot satisfy. You can dance until you dance with your neck. But you cannot be satisfied. You can wail and, ra and rave as much as you can, but you will wake up empty and disturbed and stressed. But there is no way you can come before God in prayer and seek Him and then go out dry and empty and disturbed. Let me tell you the truth. We will go out with peace and joy and happiness without end. I'm telling you, you will be glowing with His presence. Let's dwell in His presence. Let's stand on our feet. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Friends, we are hopeless without Christ. I'm telling you. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. He said, I'm the true vine. You are the branches. And without me, you can do nothing. Absolutely nothing. Only Jesus is the hope of our lives. Only Jesus is the way to the Father. Nobody comes to the Father, Jesus says, except through me. We cannot put Jesus out of the equation and then imagine we can be in his presence. There is no way. Let's bow our heads down in his presence. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We exalt your name, Heavenly Father. We praise you, eternal God and eternal King. Oh God, we come to you today in the deep desire for your presence. Lord, we might have walked without you in 2022. But in 2023, Father, we quest, we yearn for your presence. Lord, we come back home, just like the prodigal son who said, let me go back to the Father. We come back home to your presence, Lord. Forgive our trespasses, forgive our sins, Lord. Forgive the way we have handled your name in contempt. The way we have misused your name, Lord. Forgive us.
Forgive us, Lord, of any contempt. As we return home, Lord, may you forgive us. May you, just as you did with the prodigal son, may you remove our tattered clothing, our old self-righteousness, which cannot achieve your righteousness. Lord, clothe us with the righteousness that comes through Jesus. Clothe us with the righteousness that is by faith in the Son of God and in the finished work of the cross where he was made seen that you may become your, you may become your righteousness. Father, I pray for every soul here that indeed, Lord, we will come back home. We will come back home to your presence. We will seek you, Lord, as long as we live. For you say that they that seek you will find you. Lord, may we find you in 2023. We've been far away from you. We have even served and done things in your name. But you, Lord, have been far away from us. Lord, forgive us. We come back home again. We come back home, Lord. Receive us, Father. Receive us, O oh God. Put your spirit one more time on us, Lord. Yes, put your spirit on us again. May the Holy Spirit, O oh God, may your spirit hover as he hovered on the face of the earth. May the Holy Spirit hover in our midst. May the Holy Spirit hover in our services. May our, the Holy Spirit hover in our coming together. Father, we pray, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Jesus. May your presence move with us in 2023. May we not walk alone, Father. May we, walk, may we not walk alone, Father. Forgive us. Maybe you're here, you're not born again, and the only place you can come back to God is through Jesus Christ. If you're here, you're not born again, you've never given your life to Christ. Let me tell you, God is with you when you seek Him. When you come to Him, He will run to you. When you reject Him, He will still go away from you. But I don't wish you reject God. You've never given your life to Christ. You can just lift up your hand up. I will see it and I will pray with you. You're saying I'm coming back to God. Yes. Thank you for those hands. Saying I'm coming back to God. Say, I've been away from him. I'm running back to God. You still there? Lift up your head up. Yes. Don't reject him. He says, you have the decision. You can reject him and you still go away. But that's not his desire. You've not given up your, your life to Christ. You want to give your life to Christ? Lift your hand up. I will see it and I will pray with you. Any more other person lifted eye so that I see it well. Thank you for those hands. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Kindly, I want you to come in front as you're running to God. You're not ashamed of Him. Just come. Just come, those hands, please, that I've gone before the Lord. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for those people. Yes. into the presence of God. Jesus said, I am not ashamed of the cross. You know, we are not ashamed of Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. You do not reject us when we come back to you. Oh, you run to us like the son, uh, as the father of the prodigal son. Father, we thank you. If you're still there, please, you can come. Don't be ashamed. Don't, 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 don't be here. This is the, the moment you can make a decision to run back to God. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands on our chest and let's put another one up as we make this prayer as we come back to the Lord. And all the church, please kindly let's support them and make this prayer together with them. Can we say, our Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful that you gave us Jesus. And Jesus is the only way to you. I come back to you, Father. Through Jesus, our Lord and Savior. 
I repent of my sins. I repent of my unrighteousness. And I put my faith in you, God. Through Jesus Christ. Cleanse me, Lord. And make me whole. I am a new creation. And the old is past. And all has become new. I thank you, Lord, for forgiving me my sins. And you say, I will never remember them anymore. Father, I pray, clothe me with your righteousness, that I may be found holy and acceptable before you, God. Through Jesus, my Lord, forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Lord, and give me a new heart and a new spirit and a new mind and a new work and a new perspective. In Jesus' name, I'm a new creation. I'm a child of God. I'm, re I'm regenerated. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.